chapter 15 is about air pollution and stratospheric ozone depletion. It's actually a pretty meaty chapter. There's a lot of different topics that we need to discuss in this one. Your book opens up talking about Chattanooga, Tennessee. And in 1957, Chattanooga had the third worst, worst particulate pollution in the country. It's one of the leading manufacturer centers. It was located in the valley with surrounding mountains. And the pollutants got trapped between those mountains. The air, air couldn't move as freely. In 1957, it had the third worst particulate pollution, and there was an increase in respiratory disease. There was a survey in 1969, and it topped the air pollution list. In 1970, the Clean Air Act was um, enacted, and um, also in 1969, Chattanooga created their own air pollution legislation um, called the Air Pollution Control Ordinance. It controlled the... Um, sulfur dioxide. Um, you could burn sort of things only by permits. There was regulations on odors and dust. Um, they capped the amount of sulfur that could be in fuel. They limited industry emissions. Um, $40 million went into the cleanup. It created jobs. Um, they put it um, for building smokestack scrubbers. And in 1972, three years later, they passed the Clean Air Act standards. Uh, they needed to maintain the particulates down, uh, but but ozone um, was up mostly due to autos. In 1997, their ozone concentration was, was too high. But it's sort of proof that with dedication and determination, we can change air pollution. So what is air pollution? Air pollution is the introduction of chemicals, particulate matter, or microorganisms into the atmosphere at concentrations high enough to harm plants, animals, and materials, such as building or or alter e ecosystems. The pollution is mostly in the troposphere, which is the first 10 miles. It's referred to as ground level pollution. Uh, naturally occurring sources are volcanoes and fires and anthropogenic ones, human caused ones, are autos and factories. Air pollution is a global system. It travels long distances. It's a commons in, in many ways. Um, there's many inputs, autos, airplanes, vegetation are all inputs of of pollution, but then there's also many outputs. Um, vegetation, soil, clouds are all examples of outputs of air pollution. So there's a, some categories of major air pollutants. There's six major categories. Um, the definition of pollution and the classification of pollutants is still in transition. The atmosphere is a public resource, it's a global commons, and the six air pollutants, the criteria air pollutants, because under the Clean Air Act, um, they're, they're important. The EPA must specify allowable concentrations of each pollutant that's a part of the Clean Air Act. Pollution definition undergoes rapid change as we learn more. Carbon dioxide was not included in 1970, but the U.S. Supreme Court ruled carbon dioxide is considered an air pollutant under the Clean Air Act. In 2009, the EPA says carbon dioxide should be um, considered. So let's go through the six major categories. The first one is sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a corrosive gas from the combustion of fuels like coal and oil. It's a respiratory irritant and it's adverse to plants. Uh, because plants and animals have sulfur in them as part of their makeup, fossil fuels will also have sulfur in it. Um, Sulfur plus oxygen yields sulfur dioxide, and it's released during volcanic eruptions in smaller amounts in forest fires. Nitrogen oxides are often referred to as NOx. Um, it means there's either one or two oxygen atoms. So we have that nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen monoxide is colorless and odorless. Nitrogen dioxide um, has a pretty strong smell. It's a reddish-brown gas. Um, versus the either because both of them are in the atmosphere and they easily transform between the two of them because nitrogen makes up 78% of our atmosphere. The human causes, the anthropogenic causes of nitrogen oxides is motor vehicles um, and fossil fuel combustion. Natural causes of, of noxes are, are forest fires, lightning, uh, microbial action in the soil, they play a role in forming tropospheric ozone and photochemical smog, and we'll learn more about that when we look at ozone and smog. Carbon oxides can refer to either carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. 
Carbon monoxide is colorless, odorless, and formed during incomplete combustion. It's a common emission in vehicle exhaust. It's a significant component of air pollution in urban areas. And it's a dangerous indoor air pollution, um, specifically related to natural gas heaters. Carbon dioxide is a colorless odorless that is formed during complete combustion. It's absorbed by plants and released by respiration. Complete combustion is better, but fossil fuels, burning fossil fuels, is adding more CO2 to the atmosphere than there should be. Particulate matter is abbreviated as PM very often. It's uh, particulates or particles, solid or liquid particles suspended in the air. It comes from combustion of wood, manure, biofuels, coal, oil. It's most commonly known as... Um, it's most commonly known as class released from fuels like coal and oil. Diesel has more, road dust, rock crushing, volcanoes, forest fires. These are all places that are putting particles in the air. There's various sizes. They range from 0 0.01 micrometers to 100 micrometers. Um, anything bigger than 10 is filtered by your nose. So we're looking at things that are smaller than PM10. Um, the EPA does not regulate anything over PM10 because it's it's sort of insignificant. Our nose takes care of it. Um, what can particulate matter do? It can scatter, it can absorb sunlight, it can decrease photosynthesis. And the important thing is that this, these particles that are smaller than 10 micrometers can be put in our respiratory tract um, and and cause you know, toxic um, toxic problems. Haze is a reduced vis visibility when particulate matter from pollution scatters light, um, ozone and photochemical oxidants as well, but um, particulate matter is part of haze. Photochemical oxidants, including trophic spheric ozone, so oxides are reactive compounds that remove electrons from other substances. And so photochemical oxidants are a class of air pollutants that formed as a result of sunlight acting on compounds such as nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides. They're harmful to plant tissue, human respiratory tissue, and construction materials. Um, it's generally focused on ozone, which is O3. It's the most abundant and most frequently measured photochemical oxidant in the troposphere. And so we're talking about tropospheric ozone because we're going to talk about stratospheric ozone later. So tropospheric ozone is ground level ozone and it's harmful to plants and animals and causes respiratory inflammation. So while we talk about how we want ozone and we want to stop the ozone um, layer from disappearing, it's much higher in the atmosphere. Ozone at ground level is actually quite dangerous. Um, Ozone is more harmful in the presence of nitrogen oxides and VOCs, VOX, which are volatile organic compounds. Sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides plus um, ozone yield particulate matter that, and equal smog. This photochemical smog is ozone. So LA smog, Los Angeles smog, is sort of referred to as brown smog. And sulfur smog, which is formed primarily from sulfur compounds is London smog. It's more of a gray smog. It comes from the combustion of fossil fuels and biomass. It's also found um, in Asia, and it's brown from carbon and nitrogen. Uh, lead and other metals. Um, in the ground, oil and coal, um, lead used to be added to gasoline to improve vehicle performance. It's released into the air. It traveled with the winds to the ground and, and into our polar regions. Lead was phased out of gasoline in the U.S. between 1975 and 1996, and it rapidly went down as an air pollutant. But we also see lead um, entering through lead paint. Mercury is another one because it's found in coal and oil, and it's really toxic to the central nervous system. It's included in air and water, and its significance is that it bioaccumulates, especially in fish. So smaller fish, bigger fish, bigger fish, the higher in the food chain, um, you have bioaccumulation of mercury. Um, when we burn waste, um, mercury will also enter the atmosphere, um, and that's a, and coal is a major contributor. And then VOX, volatile organic compounds, abbreviated as VOCs. Um, they're organic compounds that become vapors and at typical atmospheric temperatures. Many of them are hydrocarbons like gasoline, lighter fluid, dry cleaning fluid, oil-based paints, perfume. They have a strong aroma. Vox have a strong aroma and play an important role um, 
in formation of photochemical oxidants like ozone. So if we're looking at primary and secondary pollutants, primary pollutants are pollutants that come directly out of a smokestack, an exhaust pipe, natural emission source, our carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, our sulfur dioxide, our nitrogen oxides, um, particulate matter, vox, um, things like gasoline that vaporizes. Whereas secondary pollutants are uh, primary pollutants that have undergone transformation in the presence of sunlight, water, oxygen, or other compounds. So our secondary pollutants aren't pollutants to start with, but they become pollutants. Um, solar energy, the energy from the sun, is the prime provider of that transformation of energy. Um, it occurs more rapidly with the sun and humidity, which is why many of our areas that have high sun and high humidity also have high air pollution. Ozone is our main secondary it's a result of nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds, and sunlight. Um, but then we also have um, sulfate and nitrate, um, so that SO4 minus 2 and NO3 minus 1, which comes from acid rain. So those are also secondary. And if we look at some natural sources of air pollution, um, some natural sources are volcanoes, lightning, forest fires, um, living and dead plants, all release pollutants. Volcanoes like to release sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and our nitrogen compounds. Lightning specifically re releases um, nitrogen oxides. Fire releases particulate matter, um, nitrogen oxides, NOx, and carbon monoxide. There's also natural volatile organic compounds, citrus, conifer, things that have a smell. So our citrus plants and our, and our pine trees. That's why we have the Blue Ridge or the Smoky Mountains, that those vox um, cause some of that smoke or smog to, to lay in those mountain areas. Um, particulates come a lot from agriculture. We think of the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. And in May 1980, Mount St. Helens emissions increased the particulate matter and sulfur oxides. And we also have human sources of air pollution. Many of them are monitored and controlled by the EPA. Um, transportation is the top source of Carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides are our NOx. Electricity is the largest source of sulfur oxides. Fires, road, dust, electricity is equal to particulate matter. That gives us more particulate matter. And the Clean Air Act came into act and it caused the EPA to set standards to control pollution um, that are harmful to human health and welfare. So the other thing that was that was established along with Clean Air Act was the national, the NA, NAAQS, which is the National Ambient Air Quality Standards. Um, they note the concentration that should not exceed certain specified concentrations. Um, all of our um, air pollution has decreased except for ozone and particulate matter. We're still working on those, but that NAAQS, National Ambient Air Quality Standards, um, has has worked. This is a good place to stop because we'll move into um, some other forms of air pollution.